Hello everyone and welcome to another Quick Color Master Studies. Today we are going to explore Thomas Cole. Uh, Thomas Cole was an English-born American painter known for his landscaped history paintings. One of the major 19th century American pa painters, he is regarded as the founder of the Hudson River School, an American art movement and flourished in the mid 19th century. Now he does some awesome landscape paintings. We are going to explore his uh, painting called, called The Tempter for around 10 minutes. Now, if you look at it, it's a, it's a very dark one. And in general, Thomas Cole likes to paint landscapes and mountains and trees. But I picked um, this one because I liked uh, the colors that's in the background. It has a nice reddish orange tone to them kind of a like a dying sun thing it's just my my own invention <laughs> of words okay so we're gonna quickly color pick and block in the different colors I like how he put the subject, the tempter, light, uh, light right here, and the mountain is just like majestically showing in the midground. So again, it's ten minutes per a quick study, color study, and of uh, values and shadows. Very complex. This is an oil painting, so it was painted in 1843, a few years before um, he passed away, sadly. I could have put another layer so I make the background more separate but I don't have much time anyway so okay blocking the mountain quickly Some songs, I don't like them, so I just quickly change them. They're copyright free, so you can use them at a um, from the user called Audio Library for your own creations on YouTube. see light is coming from the um, from the left part of the image and just nicely glazing over the top of the mountain and showing some different areas of color because there is the orange one and there is this light kind of a yellow okra towards gray color so it must be some kind of um, other material that's on the on the mountain okay I'm gonna put paint the paint tempter here just a black figure walking down this mountain This 
one is a lot more brighter as the horizon is uh, showing up so it must be more light since the sun is somewhere hiding beneath all those all those um, clouds This one might be, be a pretty big painting, so making the small study like this doesn't show its grand scale and how awesome it is. But we get to learn something. Okay, might make it a little brighter, this area. I color pick it, but it doesn't show exactly. time have I left? Got three full minutes. I thought I had less. Okay, we should work a bit more on the foreground. Now let's let's zoom in and check out all those awesome details. You see the orange here and the difference Differences in the material. I like this part where it gets uh, highlighted more. But the rest is kind of muted, so you get this nice contrast of uh, colors, and that's too much. Just a tiny bit, like here, maybe a little bit here. Of course, you can work it for it for hours, but uh, we want to get the whole point. Like I'm just gonna zoom out and look at both of them. To see if I have how much of color I have put in. Just a suggestion here and there. Maybe get some red in the corner here. Just gonna take this. Put some darker parts. Now don't mind me, you just do the exercise. I'm just talking to myself, babbling like a lunatic. It's a good exercise, you should do it every day. You should make it a habit to do like a warm-up before you do your own work. Who knows, you may, may maybe stumble onto something that you gonna use it. I mean, not copy, but the same technique highlights and colors and shadows and all of that complex wonderness. gradually get darker as you go to the upper area okay time's up on this one 
So I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so we are back with the second color study. It's uh, called An Evening in Arcadia and it was painted in 8043 by Thomas Cole. Now this one's a little bit different from the previous one that we've worked. It's more brighter, it has that feeling of, um, I guess it's sunset or sunrise, but I think it's sunset. And it has that nice golden hour orange color to it that's been, uh, that's hiding to the left side of our um, of those mountain bridge thing we have two characters it's a wonderful uh, illustration has a very nice composition to it so we're gonna set our timer 10 minutes and go go yeah go we will gonna paint the sky a bit quickly Just gonna paint the whole thing like that. Gonna move to the next layer. Layer, slayer, whatever. Okay, gonna put those little mountains in the background. I'm gonna work on the foreground. So you see, it has a nice shadows. And it's almost like a silhouette, this uh, mountain bridge. Though, no, I'm gonna, gonna delete it. I'm gonna do this first. So get the proportions right. So I try to study not just the colors, but uh, the whole structure of the painting. I mean, it looks, it has very organic feel to it. And I try to to learn from that. You know, this could be this could be like 500 years in the future, and this scene could have like this bridge in a megapolis and like flying ships, and uh, you know, has a totally different feel to it. You can explore those concepts. Try not to copy too much. You can uh, take the ideas of the lightning, what you could put yourself. You know, let the imagination do the work and the logic afterwards of how things work so they're more believable. Now it's more correct, I guess. As a, this one has a really nice lake in the middle. What I can see. I'm gonna paint the tree. Oh, just a suggestion of the tree. And I'm gonna work on this. This little tree over here. Just happily sitting there. Mining so business. Okay. The reflection of the sky into the lake is a key. And also the key to success of converting that illusion and giving more um, awesomeness to your painting. It's a bit brighter because the light's coming in. And this big rock over here. Now this part is totally orangey because of the sun. more 
details up here. Not that they matter, just for the fun of it. You see, you have to have fun with this. You have to enjoy playing around with all of this and learning. Because otherwise, you'll feel like it's a chore. And it shouldn't be. Okay, time for this little whatever beach it is, or it just has dirt and it's glowing this nice orange. Reflections here. Okay, I might not make them as believable, but and the mountain, and the rocks here. It's more difficult, you need to put like some highlights over this area and also back here. So yeah, you need to differentiate the shapes. And this 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 part needs to be more brighter, I guess, but I'm just putting the suggestions. I'm working with a simple chalk brush, Photoshop, same brush, just to give it a little bit of texture where I will work on everything else with the colors. This part needs to be darker. Let's just color pick it. Another good exercise is that you may don't want to color pick and just pick the color from the color picker, but um, that might slow you down a little bit, but that's okay if you prefer that. Or you can afterwards just you can before like doing this you can prepare the colors and just pick from that from those what you see on the painting I like this part it has a nice purple bluish tone to it. to paint the figures in but for me they're not important because they're just icing on the cake or cherry whatever you prefer the whole point is this area like here to capture why lights come to this part and and go here and here and has a nice contrast because it's darker here than white, you know, dark, light, dark. And then here as well, 
dark light, dark light. So he has this um, this gradation, this differences. That's important uh, in your artwork as well. In any kind of artwork, not just yours or his. So I got 30 seconds left. Just gonna make it a bit more darker. And I'm happy with it. I could put more highlights here, you know, just blah, 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 like that. You know, um, organic brush strokes. Okay, time's up. Okay, so we're, uh, we're done with this one. And I will uh, see you in the next one. So we are back for the third, for the third quick uh, color master study of Col of Thomas Cole, and this one is called the Fountain of Vow Close, if I pronounce it right. And as you can see, um, it's a much more brighter uh, painting with um, a lot of green and yellow colors, blue to it. It seems like it's in, in another time of the day as the previous ones. It has mountains, of course, and nature, and a lot of interesting stuff happening around, especially with the clouds in the very back here. So this one was painting in AD 8041. It's uh, oil on canvas, and the original size is uh, 1 meter and 75 centimeters height and 1 meter and 24 centimeters width. So, without further ado, I'm gonna put my timer to 10 minutes and let's do this. Starting with a nice gray on top and warm and, you know, kind of warmish gray. Really nice. Enjoy the contrast of this because it's an it's a cool kind of cool warm gray, and then you go to this warm, very orangey as you descend towards the um, to the image, like this puffy clouds. Great puffy clouds. a lot of work there. He put a lot of detail everywhere. But that doesn't scare us, right? We're just gonna study from it, like this line going here. It's almost as it shows that, you know, going from here to here, it's like there's something there. You have to look at it. Might be he painted on purpose to make your eye look at that point. Artists do that, you know. Okay. Yeah, this one's a really cool illustration. I like it more than the others I've done. That's why I left it for the last one. I need the warm up. Because if I started on this one, I might have screwed up. Could not learn. Well, I could learn, but could not complete it. I might not even complete it on time, but... You know, the essence of it. As much as I can. 
Yeah, lake turning here, real nice. And the green stuff, good. Nice contrast here. Just the light fades away. See how the brush strokes here is like it's like going like that, like going and just pointing toward that point to show you that there is something more, but it's hidden. It's not for you yet to explore. So he kind of toys with us with the idea uh, of that, that there's something more, and that's very interesting because you could do it yourself. Try to toy with the image and make like an invisible invisible visible path as you construct the image to show that it's leading to something lead the eye it's very important to make the viewer you know visually interested in your image and make it automatically makes it a better one Nice monastery down there. Nice castle up there. It looks like it almost came out from a um, fairy tale. There's a lot more complex shapes all over the place. I might not be able to do them in time, so I'm just gonna go for uh, what I can and make as much what he does with the different differences of colors. You see there's another path here, it's going like way back here. And this tree is sitting here and dividing the um, foreground with the midground really nicely it's going to make quick slob of it <laughs> not totally accurate at all yeah need to separate the height you know this this part is higher than the than the lake and also from the colors need to separate those things keep them apart This one there's so many different shades of uh, green and everything else that's crazy Some, some 
lighter green here as the light hits from the um, from the right Two lonely rocks sitting there and disturbing the flow of the um, of the river. Okay, time for the little monastery here to be brought to the scene. Okay, that's too much. Just a little bit of red. Then I didn't successfully color pick it. Okay, I don't think I have much time left, so I'm probably going to be concluding this soon. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and learned something from it. Let me know in the comment section what you like, what you don't dislike. If you're getting any anything helpful from, from this to use into your own work. So I could continue doing this or not and start a something different but as I do this it helps me as well I learn new things and it's very interesting and I think you should do it real nice separation here little nice shapes to play with it's all about cool shapes. Cool shapes, yeah. That's visually interesting. Yep, right here. Okay, this part is a bit underdeveloped. Uh, well, some something would be. It's just too much, too many things to handle at the same time. But that's okay. Just a little bit of green and black here. Darker tones. Okay, how much time left? Okay, time's up. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching and. Uh, See you in another video.